Libra, this is your weekly reading. This is a general reading, so if it resonates for you, there will be an extended at the end. And in the extended, I'm going to go over timeline, advice, blockages, and things you're not seeing. I'll also answer three yes or no questions with my pendulum. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because it really is beneficial for you. You'll get notified all things Libra. And an added bonus is it's completely free. It doesn't cost you anything to hit the subscribe button, so you can go ahead and click it. And then you'll get notified when I upload Libra readings, and I do that every single week. I'll pull some oracle cards and we'll hop right into your tarot reading. Yin. This is about receiving and this is all of, also about emotion. We'll see where we're going with this. This is about your connection. This is like the high priestess as well. This is your connection to your higher power. Truth be told. Chop wood. And what you're not seeing is building blocks. I feel like you're either starting over or you're creating something new that I don't think you realize that is like a foundation for something else. I feel like I feel like the work you're doing is a foundation for like some other situation. It's realizing there's some sort of something to do with like emotions or spirituality. I'll lay the tarot cards down and then we'll go over them. Ace of Pentacles. Moon. Nine of Wands. You know, it's funny because this yin energy is a two, which is purely feminine energy and then pentacles is earth of earth so it's like that's feminine energy and then this moon is feminine moon the moon is feminine energy as well this is cancer nine of wands eight of swords five of wands lovers and the overall energy is the Wheel of Fortune. Um, I feel like time or destiny has kind of stepped in. I feel like you've been given ample opportunity to do what it is that you were called to do. And the universe is kind of tired of your bullshit. The universe is tired of your bullshit. Like, I, I, there really is no gentle way of saying it. The universe, I wouldn't be surprised if the tower comes out. Or maybe even the death card. Like there's some sort of like major change. Let's clarify the Wheel of Fortune. Two of Cups, Eight of Wands, Ten of Swords. Okay, so evidently this is a love reading. Um, it was, It's almost like destiny stepped in and brought somebody into you. There might be a relationship that's ending, but it's ending because there's like new love coming in. There's like some sort of communication that the universe is trying to tell you that whatever it is like... Whatever you're in, you need to end it now because there's love coming in. It's like destiny, a destined romance, a destined love. That Okay, okay, okay. This makes sense now. This yin, truth be told, chop wood and what you're not seeing is building blocks. When I sat there and I was saying that whatever you're doing right here is actually um, creating the foundation for something else. So if you're ending this relationship, then it's because like something else is going to come in. Like it could this could potentially be a twin flame reading along the lines of when you heal yourself, this person heals themselves as well. So it's like whatever you're healing over here is happening in this person. And it's because you're doing the work. They're doing the work, and it's like that's what connects you two together. This Ace of Pentacles, Four of Swords, Six of Cups, Death card. I was going to say the Death card, too. I'm not surprised that that came out because this is about a transformation and about changing and healing childhood wounds. I feel like you might have gone through a dark night of the soul, and you're doing the healing. You're actually doing the work. And because you're doing the work, it's like this chop wood right here. You're creating a whole new foundation for yourself. 
that's why I was like thinking like all of this feminine energy was because like this could be the feminine parts of you that need to be healed and the feminine parts of them that need to be healed. The moon, the knight of swords, and the ten of pentacles and the four of wands. So this is about um, being honest and truthful about what a stable relationship is, about what a stable romance is. It's, you know, not... In the Bible, it's like, I think it's like, I can't remember the verse, but it's the Corinthians one about love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, you know, love does not tell lies. And it's like, love is honest. If you love someone, you're going to be honest with them because it is harder to be honest with somebody and expose yourself in that way than it is to just lie about it and push it under the rug. If you lie or if you, if somebody tells you the truth and they tell it from like a really deep part of themselves, they're basically saying, look, honey, I love you. I want you in my life. And so I'm telling you what bothered me. So that way you can either apologize or change your ways for it so that I can have you stay in my life. Because if you're not going to change it or you're not going to feel bad about the way that you treated me or what you did, then I am going to leave you or remove you from my life. That's what it means when somebody says something truly honest to you. If they open themselves up to you, and I feel like that's what you're seeing, is you're seeing that, that it is extremely hard work to be able to say stuff like that to, to people, you know, to really tell people what you're feeling. And so it's like, that's what you're overcoming. And that's what you're stepping into at the same time is like, I only want to be around people that are willing to tell me the truth. I had one of my friends. She's like, you know, she's like, I kind of say what goes on my mind, but um, I kind of feel like you might do more of that than I do. And I'm like, really? And she's like, uh, yeah. Because, like, there have been times that, like, I did something and I was like, oh, God, you know, that was a really jerk move of me. Like, I want to apologize and I want to be like, I want to say sorry for what I did. And they're like, oh, it's no big deal. And I'm like, but it is a big deal. Like, I know that I betrayed you in that moment or I, I said something I shouldn't have said at that time. And I just want you to know that I know it bothered you and that I, I, from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. I want you in my life. And I know you're not going to say anything about it, but I want you to know that I know that I screwed up. Eight of Swords. I'm very much like I hold myself accountable for things. And so people are actually like flabbergasted when I sit there and I'm like, oh, man, you know, I really screwed that up. I'm really sorry. Like, I, I didn't mean to upset you. Like, I know how I would have felt in that situation. And, you know, I would have been really upset or I would have been really hurt or I would have been angry. And I just want you to know, like, I, I didn't do that on purpose. That wasn't my intention. So I hope you can forgive me for being, you know, a human and making a stupid mistake. You know, that, like that vulnerability is extremely big in every type of relationship. You know, it's like nobody's perfect. Nobody expects you to be perfect. But I also feel like maybe you didn't do that for a long time because um, maybe it was knocked down or knocked, you know, you were knocked down when you or treated like crap or you were ignored when you expressed yourself like that. So I feel like that was really hard for you for a while. You do have a lot of regrets with that, but it also ultimately did not change your core. It didn't change who you are. Like, that is who you are. Like, you're one of those people that, um, you know, if you screw something up, you can 100% admit it. And then it's, it, you know, people will call you out. There was this one time I was a waitress. This was, God, this was so many years ago. And I asked the other server, I was like, is this your table? And I swear she said, no, it was somebody else's. And I was like, okay. So I took it. And then, like, she was so nasty to me the rest of the day. And I'm like, did something happen? She's like, you know, she's like, I really, you know, um, don't appreciate you taking my table. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, that table. I was like, oh, I thought you said it was the other girls. I said, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I didn't do that on purpose. I'm like, I 100% thought you said it was hers. She's like, oh. But she sat there the entire shift, and she, like, stole my table. 
She was rude to me in front of customers. She was disrespectful. Instead of sit, coming to me and being like, that really bothered me and not realizing that, you know what, it got busy and it got loud and I misunderstood, misunderstood what she said, that it wasn't me coming from this awful, terrible, bitchy, vindictive place. Once she realized where I was coming from, then everything was fine. And I was like, I'm really sorry. Like, I didn't know. I'm like, I really 100% thought that you said that it was the other girl's table who was on lunch. I'm like, I'm not going to save a table for her when she's on lunch. And she's like, no, you're, you're not. And she's like, then everything was fine. But I feel like that's where you're coming from. Is like, you might not have said things for a long time, but that is who you ultimately are to the core. Is like, that's the type of person that you are or you were until you changed your ways and now you're coming back to it. That's the work you're doing. That's the work you're doing. That's the work you're building. And doing that and stepping into that authenticity, that rawness of who you are of like, oh, you know what? I screwed up. You know, oh, you know what? I screwed up. Like that just 100% accountability for your actions and 100% honesty in situations be like, Oh, yeah, I did do that. I'm really sorry. That, that was stupid. I shouldn't have done that. I regret it. Like, I don't even know what I was thinking in the moment. I'm a human, and I made a total mistake. You know, just having that accountability for your actions, just it goes so extremely far in relationships because people, they know that when, when you screw up, you're going to come and you're going to say something, and then they feel safe with you. Five of Wands, Knight of Pentacles, Tower, and eight of pentacles. And it's also going to be one of those situations where you're going to expect it from other people too. And it's going to be a situation where you know that this person is lying. You know that this person is purposely causing issues and purposely like trying to start trouble. And it's like, but you're not. You're really trying to be like the calm, collected person and handle things. And it's like, bam, this tower happens and you're like, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to remove these people from my life. You know, it's like removing those people from your life that don't reciprocate that type of honesty, that type of respect. You know, that's what actually needs to happen here because that's the choice of ending. That's the ending that needs to happen. But you ultimately have to make that decision for yourself. Clarify the lovers. Seven of Wands. Eight of Cups. Chariot, High Priestess, and Two of Pentacles. So this decision that you make about taking of, about being firm in who you are and defending yourself, it really projects you into a higher lot. It's more it's a higher vibration of like welcoming. Like people want to be around you. You know, it's like you're creating the safe place inside yourself, and by creating the safe place inside yourself you create a safe environment for people to be vulnerable around you. And that's exactly what needs to happen. It's like there's like just this coming together of just this oneness within yourself of like, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like your ego. It's like you you don't think you're better than this person and you don't think that you deserve more than this person. And by sitting there and being vulnerable and acknowledging when you screwed something up and apologizing for it, and being there and being present in that moment and for people to see you call yourself out and hold yourself accountable, it's like that is a safe place for other people to like be around. And that's what people want. People want to feel safe and they want to know that if one of their friends or family members or lovers or significant others screws up, that they're going to come to them and be like, so I did something and I really regret it and I feel really bad about it. Or I said something and I just want to apologize. Like I, that's not how I intended it to come out. And I just realized it after the fact that, oh, you know, this could have been taken the wrong way. So that's what I have for you, Libra. In the extended, I'm going to go over timeline, advice, blockages, and things you're not seeing. I'll also answer three yes or no questions with the pendulum. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because then you'll get notified for free all things Libra. It really is beneficial for you because I do upload Libra readings every single week. Also, a couple of videos are going to pop up here. If the titles resonate for you, I highly recommend you check them out and I'll see you over there.